Hello folks, this is Eric with Bailey Industrial. Thanks for joining us. Today we're gonna take a little time and do a video on our desktop wood router series of machines. We have three of them. Uh, the smallest being the DEM0906, followed by the DEM1717 machine, and the largest being the DEM2720. Uh, this video is gonna primarily focus on the DEM 0906. We're going to cover software, drawing, uh, tooling, uh, material setup, and cutting. So sit tight and we will get started. So to get started, we're going to take a look at the editing software that comes with these machines. Uh, it's important to understand what the software is obviously capable of. So to do that, what we're going to do is Go up to the check mark here, we're going to click on that, and we're going to open uh, a sample file. There's some files that come with the software that you can use to kind of get familiarized with the machine and the software. So these are good to use. You also can click New Picture right here, and that's where you would click to get an image offline or something you've saved on a USB or onto your computer, so you can import it right into the software. So we're just going to grab something here that we already have. You can see here they're relatively basic images and we're going to open up this folder and specifically we're going to go into the acrylic folder and we're going to grab uh, one of these photos. I think we'll take this tiger for instance. Hit OK. And what you see there is a populated image, a grayscale image of that tiger. Um, so there's a few things we can do here. This is kind of how the machine works though. It works off these color differences to determine what our uh, either negative cuts or positive cuts on the material. The darker areas being the cuts that are going to go deeper or into the material and the lighter shaded cuts that are going to be on the surface more so. So one thing we can do is down here in the image rotation we can rotate the image around if we so choose uh, in 90 degree increments and what we also can do is crop the image as well. If we want to get rid of this dark area in front of the face or the back side here behind the head, uh, we can crop that out. And here's where we can do our sizing uh, for, the, for the image or so that it fits our material that we're going to be using. So to do this, uh, we're going to uncheck this or unlock this function. And I'm just going to actually type in a value here. I'm going to crop this down. Right now it says it's at about 10, a little over 10 inches. Uh, we're going to crop it down to about eight inches or so and then we're going to hit refresh here so what it does you can see there's a blue box that's generated around the image and this is the area that's going to be cut and you see kind of a representation of that on the right hand side um, so that's all going to be cropped out so that kind of changes the look of this entirely and if that again is not enough or too much you can just use the little arrows down here in the area selection ratio area and change that make it more make it less whichever you need to do i think we'll go with that right there um, so that's what we want to do there then the next thing we can do is now actually size the image right now it's saying it's eight and a half inches by a little over seven inches that's a little too big for the material that we're going to put down on the machine to cut this uh, the material i have here is about four and a half by four and a half so we're going to make it a little bit smaller than this. So we're just going to go in here and type in 4.5. And when we click in the screen, it's going to scale it symmetrically in both X and Y directions so that the image stays proportionate to itself. Once we're done with that and we're happy with the rendering that we're seeing here, all we got to do is click OK. And we have a rendering of the size of the image that we're going to get. So now we have our image in place, we have it uh, cropped to the right size, it's going to fit our material. We can now look at the editing tools that come with the software and kind of talk about what they are able to do. And those are all located on the left hand side of the software. They're pretty basic, pretty easy to understand. Uh, starting at the bottom here are your simple zoom in and zoom out tools. Uh, this is an inverse tool and as you hover on these you can see it tells you the name of the tool. 
Um, there's also a really nice description in our manual for each tool as to what they are called and what they actually do to the image. So inverse is actually going to inverse those colors of the image. So when I click that, you can see how those, this image takes a different appearance. And what it's actually doing is taking the areas that were traditionally white and turning them black and vice versa uh, for the white. So if I click it again, it'll put it right back to the way it was, but you can see how those colors are changing. Every time I use or click a tool over here or apply a different look or appearance to this image, it's gonna record it over here on the right-hand side. So here I just clicked inverse this picture and it left a copy of that image. Um, so if I do an image here and I'm not happy with it, um, I can undo it. I can right click on these uh, functions here that I put in this list and I can delete them and basically work my way backwards. It almost is like a little cam tree that's being developed on the right hand side as you're going through this process. So it's kind of handy and nice, nice to use. The next tool above the inverse tool is the frame tool. When I click on that, it just takes a second to open. Uh, what it actually has here is a little internal library of uh, some borders and accent corner pieces that you can use for your image. So to apply one of these, just simply click on it. It'll then preview your image inside that border. You can then use uh, these two horizontal and vertical orientation fields to move your image around, get it centered within that frame. So another option for you there. And then once you're happy with where it is, just simply click OK and that will apply that onto that image. Uh, above that is the mirror tool, which is a pretty simple function. You can see that it just simply flops that image back and forth, left to right, giving it a different orientation as well. And again, as you see on the right hand side, it is documenting or keeping a list of all the functions I'm applying to this. Um, and again, I can right click on these and I can just delete them out if I so want and put it right back to the beginning. The next tool above that is the smooth tool. Uh, there's three different levels of smoothing, one, two, and three, three being the highest. Uh, this is just simply something that's going to apply to an image and kind of blend everything together. If you have an image that's extremely pixely, um, doesn't have the greatest amount of detail, uh, the best thing you'd want to do is obviously put that into a photo editing software like uh, Illustrator, Photoshop, something like that to truly crisp up the image and make it as sharp as possible. Uh, but this does have a smoothing option in here for kind of blending everything together and getting rid of some of that pixel uh, quality that you see in, in some images. And you can just simply click apply and it's going to kind of do a smooth over the entire image pretty quickly and then record that function on the right hand side there. So that's a nice option. So the next tool we want to discuss is the text tool. Um, this is a tool that you'll probably use quite a bit. Uh, it's located in the center of the uh, toolbar on the left hand side. And when you click on that icon, you'll get this dialog box where you can simply type in your text that you would like to use, the font that you'd like to use that with, and the font size that you would like to use as well. A lot of adjustment there. These are some different looks that you can do on the uh, text that you're typing in, italicize, um, underline, bold, and those type of things. And these are all orientation. Horizontal mirror and vertical mirror are orientation. So it's gonna take that text and, and possibly flip it and put it upside down in different orientations that you can do there on the image. If you're happy with what it looks like there, just simply press OK and it'll populate it on the image. Um, I can take it, I can left click and hold my left mouse button down and drag it wherever I need to and put it anywhere I'd like. I can also come back and right click in it and go to edit and it'll take me right back to this dialog box and I can change maybe that font size. Okay, press OK. And it gives me a updated version of that font. And again, I can orientate it anywhere, I, anywhere I'd like. So that's a pretty easy and simple function to use. 
So the next few tools that are left are relatively simple to use. Uh, this is an inverse tool. So what you can do here is determine uh, certain areas within an image to give them a specific cut depth. So we could select certain parts of this image and give them a different color and that's going to equate to a different profile how the machine actually cuts that area. So that's a kind of a more of a custom selection tool. This is an eraser tool. So if we want to remove um, some image on here that we, we don't want, maybe this top corner, we can erase that right off of there. And this is obviously a, a color fill tool. So we can again adjust those colors, determine how it's going to cut uh, on this image, and then another dropper tool for selecting uh, those things. So that's pretty much all the tools that are available on the software. Um, now we're going to get over on the right hand side of the software and start talking about the tooling that is in the software and uh, how to use it and how to adjust it. So the next step in the process here is to assign a tool to this image to actually get a cut path on it so we can actually make this, this item. Um, so that's all going to happen up here in the upper right corner of the screen. Uh, these are all drop down menus. One thing we can do too under this one that says 3D view is view our image in a 3D kind of look or format. We can rotate this and orientate this and kind of get an understanding of what truly is going to be negative and, and positive cuts. So in this instance here where you see the black on the tiger's face, that's an area in here that's going to be cut down into the material. This one too right next to it is black so this is going to go down into that material so we can see a, a really nice image rendering of what we're actually going to cut and how it's going to kind of look a little bit three-dimensionally so you can tip this and alter it and, and play with it to get a real understanding of what it's going to look like so that's a nice nice feature um, and then we can just X out of it to close it So the tab we want to go to to actually uh, assign a tool to the image is up here where it says output setting. Uh, so when we click that tab, what we're going to see here is first thing it's going to give us options for work orientation or a work origin point. So what we can do is right now it's on the lower left corner. We can pick any one of these corners we want. We want to pick the upper right, the lower right, or the center. We can do that. Just bear in mind that when you go to the machine and physically move the tool into position, you then need to do that based off of what you pick up here. So if you're picking the center, you're going to have to find center of your material and, and zero it out at that point, and then that's where that machine's going to cut from at that point. So we're going to pick the lower left for this project, and then here under cutting path, these are just two different ways you can choose to have the machine run. If you want it to run left to right or in the x-axis, you can pick this one. If you want it to run forward and back or in the y-axis, you can pick this orientation here. So now we're going to go and actually grab a tool from the library and program a tool to this image. So over here where it says output setting on top, we're going to go down inside there where it says tool paths, little blue tab there, we're going to click that and that takes us into the internal library of the software and these are all preloaded tools in this library so pretty common tools a fair amount of them uh, you can see there's an end mill category a ball nose category a v carving category and a conical radius category um, if you click on any one of these numbers these identification numbers it's going to show you an updated profile of what that tool actually is about how it looks um, it's going to show you the diameter of the tool the flute length of the tool the radius on the very bottom of the tool, recommended step over to get a nice profile, and then feed rate and spindle speeds that are recommended. So this column here in the center is more for tool information. So we can pick a tool and update that instantaneously. The tools up here on the top with the numbers by them, one through five, are tools that have been recently used on jobs. So this will kind of keep a little category of uh, used tools and a lot easier to just grab those there than maybe go through the list. On the far right hand side where it says set cutting parameters, this is where you're actually giving this tool a cutting depth. 
So now you're deciding on max carving depth, how deep you want this tool to cut, uh, how much step down you want it to do per pass, and all different things like that. Uh, how many passes it's taking and so on. So this is where you're actually setting that depth in this case. When you grab a tool, as you can see here, it's gonna kind of default and change everything automatically and give you a, somewhat of a recommendation and you can leave that as such, but you also can alter it. So very easy to do. Once you pick the tool you want, just simply click OK down here and you're good to go. So for this specific project and the material that we're gonna use, uh, I'm going to pick a ball nose bit. Uh, I'm going to pick this bottom one here, uh, 4025A020. And I'm going to take this one primarily because it's got a very, very small uh, tip or radius at the end of it. So the, the tinier that tip I can get or the smaller we can get that, the more detail we can get out of this image. So I'm going to pick that tool. I'm going to leave everything on the cutting parameters as well the same. I'm not going to cut any deeper than that. And you can kind of alter this by either indexing the tool or zeroing the tool a little deeper than the material surface or just putting in a number. I'm perfectly fine with that. And then at this point, we just simply click OK and that toolpath is now applied. Now we can go down and transfer that toolpath into G code. So now we've picked the tool and now we're ready to transfer that toolpath into G-code so that this machine can operate from that. So to do that, we're just going to go down here to the lower right corner of the screen where it says transfer to G-code. And we're going to give that a click and it's going to ask us that we want to transfer this to G-code and yes we do. And then it's going to compute that and you can see a little taskbar down here as well in the lower right corner of the screen doing all that calculation. So the more detail your image has and the finer their tool is, obviously requires the more passes the tool has to take. It might take a little longer to compute the G-code onto the file. So now that the uh, toolpath is finished computing, uh, it will now give you an option to save the image. Now you're going to be creating a .bp file. So this is a file specific to the router, to the machine. It's a G-code only file. Uh, so it's only going to be read by the machine. So I already pre-saved it here. It's, I called it Tiger. And we just go ahead and we'll click Save. And we'll overwrite on top of this. Just say yes. And at that point, our file is written. Uh, it's ready to go. We can now close the editing software. We're done doing any kind of designing or drawing. And we can now go to the operation software, which also comes with the machine. And we can now get the machine ready for cutting. So now we've opened up the operation software for the machine itself. And the first thing you're going to see is this screen pop up here. You're going to have a few options here of connecting the machine. Uh, go to last reference point or go to home. Last reference point would be for if you had a, a pre-saved location on the machine's table that you want to put this tool onto and start at that same point. You'd click that and then click the check mark and that would take you to that location. In this case, we're just going to go, go to home, and it's, it is important to home the machine every time you use it. It helps to square the gantry of the machine or the table of the machine and also help with accuracy of parts. So we're going to click go to home and click the check mark. And at this point, all of our accesses are moving, going to those home positions. So the next screen that you're going to see is the main operating screen for the operation of the machine itself. We've got our current position coordinates right here in the center. And we've got our buttons here in the center for moving the machine around itself. So the Y plus or minus is going to move the table forward and back. Uh, X minus and plus is going to move that spindle left to right. And then Z plus or minus is going to move that spindle up or down. Over here on the right hand side is our spindle speed, which we can change by simply sliding the ruler here um, and increasing our spindle speed or decreasing. We can do this while the machine's cutting. And then likewise here for feed rate, we can adjust our feed rate, how fast the machine's moving as it's cutting uh, in real time as it's cutting and adjust all that accordingly.
So now what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to import our file, our .bp file that we just got done making into the software. I'm going to click this open tab up here on top. It's going to take me into my computer and I'm looking for that tiger.bp file right there. And I'm going to click on that and then click open. It takes a second to generate. It produces the G code here in front of you. Down below you can see a processing taskbar that's currently working. And what we're looking for is we're going to see a, a rendering of our, of our image up here in the upper right corner. Obviously, the greater the detail, the longer this can take. And there you got it. So there's our image of our tiger. It shows our current router location or tool location. We'll be moving that here shortly. But you see the exact same image that we made back in the editing software in this case. So now we can still move the machine around, adjust the axes, and get this tool in position. Uh, next, what we're going to do is actually put material down on the machine and go through that process and set our machine origin. So we have our machine on. We're going to open the lid here. And we already have two clamps inside the machine. These are the clamps we're going to use to hold our material down. These are the ones that do come with the machine. They do a very good job holding that material down. And what we're going to use is this piece of 6x6 six by, six by 1 hardwood and we're going to engrave on this top surface and we're going to hold it down pretty much in the center like that. Uh, this corner over here, this lower left corner as you're looking at it being our work origin that we're going to set. All right, so we've got the material clamped on the bed of the machine. It's secure, it doesn't move around at all. Uh, no real signs to it, just want to make sure it's secure so it's not going to move during the cutting process because obviously if that material moves, uh, your image is going to come out incorrect and have flaws in it. Um, if you need to use all four clamps that come with the machine, by all means do that. Um, all I we're using in this case are these two and that's more than enough in this instance. The other thing too is that if you are using natural products, uh, wood for instance, make sure it is flat and true, that it isn't cupped or warped in any way. That'll help with the reveal and the quality of the image that you get. And it also helps to pick materials like in wood in this case that has very minimal grain. Um, if you're trying to engrave an image onto wood for instance and there's lots of grain pattern into the wood. Uh, pine's a good example where there's lots of grain pattern and lots of knots and things like that in the wood. It's going to be real difficult in some cases to see the image correctly. So you might actually uh, really want to use wood that has basically no grain uh, at all or very minimal grain to get the best quality. So now we're going to set a work origin for the machine on our material using this lower left corner of our workpiece. Uh, if you remember back at the beginning here where we picked that origin point on there, we just want to correlate that here as well on the machine. So to do that, we're just going to use the X, Y uh, buttons and Z, and we're going to move the machine physically to those locations. And at this point here, I'm going to stop and I'm going to bring the Z down so that I can make sure that that tool isn't going to hit our clamp and if so just move it on over a little bit and just continue moving on up to that corner as far as we can get anyway. We'll go right there and I'll bring the Z down just a little bit more. Make a little indent there just so you can see visually where we were at. It's pretty much right on that very edge of the material. So now at this point, we're going to go back to that point. And you can slow down how fast the machine moves, obviously, by adjusting that feed rate bar. Because now you can see it's going to move real slow. I just slid it down. 
because we're going to want to do that anyway for our z-axis. As we bring this down, we want that height to be perfect. And to do that, we want to use a piece of paper to actually gauge that distance. So what I'm going to do is slide this paper in here and slowly bring this down until it pinches that paper right there. So now at this point, we want to click the three zero icons in our coordinate screen and clear out all three axes. So now with our tool in the right physical location on the material, we can now set that work origin. And to do that, we're going to just simply click these zero buttons in the coordinate screen and we're going to zero out all three of those axes. So now this position will remain a constant on the table or on the machine until uh, you do change it again or until you change it. The only time you would uh, be changing this is if you're just setting a different origin on a different size of material or a different height of material. If a tool breaks and you need to replace a tool, then you would just be zeroing out the Z axis. Um, so if you're doing a repeatable part um, and you can index the material on the machine in the exact same place every time, then quite honestly you can use the same work origin maybe all the time. So that's it. We're ready to go. Now at this point, we're going to adjust our feed rate and spindle. Uh, spindle speed is going to stay at 100%. We're just going to take our feed rate and move it up to around 50%. And we're going to click run at this point. And at that point, the machine's going to turn the spindle on. It's going to get up to speed and it's going to raise up and, and start the cutting process. And then we can watch up here in the upper right corner a rendering of where that cutting process is. There'll be a status bar moving throughout this picture showing us where it's at in its duration um, and then down here as well we can also watch the total lines of code what line we're currently on um, and so on to get an idea and then it also has a kind of a stopwatch down here to tell us how long it's been running for so we're good to go and now we're going to go ahead and run the job all we got to do now is click run and machine is going to start up the speed and start the cutting process. So I just want to take a second and show you how it's progressing on the material using this tool. You can kind of see a, a kind of grainy texture on the material and that's basically all the detail that's on the fur uh, of this tiger image that we're using. So this is going to have a lot of detail. This should look extremely sharp and uh, come out quite well. So we have the lid open on the machine. And with the lid open, there will be a little dialog box that will come on your software. Just telling you that that lid is open. Uh, you can simply click that and move on past. Uh, but now at this point, all we need to do is shut that lid, click resume, and uh, we'll pick up right where we left off. So now I've paused the cutting process, opened the lid on this machine, 
I uh, just want to show you kind of where everything is, is at currently right now. Uh, we're roughly right at halfway here. You can start seeing the texturing of the tiger. It's looking pretty good. And if we go over to the computer here and look at our software, you can see on our preview that we have our status bar is roughly around halfway through that. That vertical green line is our status. Everything on the left side has been completed. Everything on the right is still yet to be done. So we are moving along. Again, that uh, warning message pops up when you open the lid on this machine. Just simply sh shut the lid and click OK and then you can resume the cutting process. And you can see here that we're around 47% done. So just about halfway done. So we're going to go ahead and shut the door, click resume and finish this up. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope it was beneficial for you and answered a lot of your questions. Please leave your comments below. You definitely can check us out on all the normal social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you have any questions about this product or any of our other products that we offer, go to the website, bailey.com. Thanks for watching.